the simplest way for me to explain what real love is, it's a love that connects us to God, ourselves, and others in a manner that is mutually beneficial. So some words that you could use to describe it are it's a healthy love, it's a wholesome love, and a selfless love. And the reason why we have a right to it is because it's the way God designed us. He designed us to function innately with real love. And the sad thing about it is there are a lot of people in our world today who they don't have that real love in their life. And even worse, they don't even have that real love within themselves. Hey, what's going on, family? I'm Jonathan J. Emanuel, and you're doing life with my girl, Lakeisha, on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, welcome to another episode. I am so excited that you're here. I don't take it lightly that you decide to hit that play button and spend about an hour of your time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So every week I'm bringing my A game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, purpose-driven life. And so family, just want to remind you to please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Because as you know, I set a lofty goal to touch one million hearts within the first two years. And I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share the conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Also, don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. So family, we are in the Strategize Your Vision series inspired by my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision. And today is week seven. And we had some really amazing conversations in the previous week that are designed to help you to construct the building blocks for your purpose-driven strategy. Now, why is this important? It's important because you deserve to live a life that was designed specifically for you. And more importantly, someone is waiting on you, waiting on your gift, your talent, your bravery, in order for them to walk into their greatness. And after some pretty deep yet challenging conversations, we're going to lighten up the mood just slightly to have a very important dialogue about love. Love is such a powerful yet delicate word. And we all yearn to feel, to experience, to give and to receive love, right? But not just any type of love. We want a healthy love. And after living in a pandemic for a year, we can all agree that love is something that is so needed right now, more than ever, right? And unfortunately for some people, love is absent from their environment or is absent from their personal circles. Or they just have a, or some people may have a destructive perception of what it is and need exposure to another way of understanding what love is and what it can be. So in today's conversation, Jonathan and I are talking about what love truly means and why you have the right to experience real love. So let me take a moment to introduce my friend to you. Jonathan J. Emmanuel is the host of the Right to Real Love Radio, the number one dating and relationship podcast for Christians that will help you develop better relationships with God, yourself, and others. He also recently co-authored a prayer book with his mom for single women entitled Manifest Him, Powerful Prayers for Your Future Husband. Now, how many of you are praying for your future husband or your future wife? Anybody? Somebody? Well, why not? Why are you wrestling with that question? <laughs> or why not? Why am I not praying for my husband? Let's go ahead and dive right into the conversation. Jonathan, thank you so 
much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Truly an honor. I appreciate you for extending the invitation. Definitely a pleasure. I am so excited. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so excited to be having this conversation with you. You're like one of my favorite people, believe it or not. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> Thank you. You are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, are su- you are such a cool dude. You're such a cool dude. Um, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. So I like to start off every episode with just talking about how I come to know the person I'm speaking with. And this episode is no different. So family, um, y'all and then reached out to me back in 20... 20- 19, I got an email from, from this guy, his name is Jonathan, um, pitching me to be on his podcast. Somebody requested or, or, you know, recommended that I would be a good, a uh, good guest for his podcast, the right to real love podcast. And, um, he pitched me to be on it. And I said, yes. However, not too long after saying yes, I had to, um, reschedule because, Um, my brother was murdered. You guys know that that's something that I have shared on the podcast. And so it was my interview on his podcast was postponed, postponed to the, to the following year and, um, had the opportunity to be on his podcast. And it was a wonderful episode. You guys definitely have to have to check it out. Um, I talked about how to avoid bringing old hurt into new relationships, You can check the show notes because I'm going to leave the links to my podcast episode in the show notes. And um, it was just a really good conversation. It was, y'all think you are so easy to to talk to. Um, You're such a, you know, a a faith-driven man. I absolutely love that. And ever since then, you guys, I've been like recommending all type of people to y'all and then to be on on his podcast. And, you know, every person, that I referred over to you to be on the podcast who have actually been on the podcast. They're like, Oh my God, Yonder is the coolest person ever. That's all I got. <laughs> hey family, quick announcement. If you're ready to go deeper and would love to continue the conversation outside the podcast, then I have something just for you. I'm creating a safe, judgment-free zone community of like-minded people to grow and build the support team that's needed to operate in purpose. If you want to join me, then please click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can partner together on your self-awareness journey. I am so looking forward to getting to know know you and to deep dive into your purpose so you can make an impact on the world. All right. So don't forget to click the link that's in the show notes. Now back to the conversation. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, you know, when you get uh, compliments like that, that just makes you want to refer more people over to the person, right? Because I know that Yana is going to take care of the people that I, that I sent over to him and he's, you know, very professional, very kind. And so that's what makes you want to help people out is when they're professional and kind. That's facts right there. (laughs) That's facts right there. And you're talking to somebody who is very cautious about recommendations um, that I hand out, whether that is job recommendations or even recommendations to like be on a guest on a podcast as a guest. I'm very selective on, you know, who I'm willing to, you know, reach out to people that I know, such as yourself or our fellow podcasters and make that connection because like you say, I have to make sure that it's going to be mutually beneficial and that the people that were treated right when they were a guest on Right to Real Love are also going to be respected and treated right when they go over to that other podcaster. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And because I've been through your process, I know how detail oriented you are as well. (laughs) Back in. And and that's huge because my guests, when they, you know, when they're on this podcast, they always tell me how organized I am. Oh my God, you you are so organized. Like everything was so, I was like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I want to, you know, send them to people that's going to be the same way because I kind of spoil my guests a little bit, which is with the organization, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's good though. Yeah. You should treat them right. It's just like, think about it. If you were on a business trip, if your yeah. job sent you on a business trip mm-hmm. and you know that, let's say you work for like a multi-billion dollar corporation, mm-hmm. if they got you sitting in the back of the plane 
if they got you with the most rinky dink rental car and they got you in the motel six, you're going to rethink how that employer values you. At least Absolutely. I think so, you know, because having been in a position to work at a billion dollar business before they treat you well and it's something you never forget. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least I know I haven't. I've never forgotten how well I was treated. Some of the best times of my life was when I was in corporate America. And it just made me appreciate how important it is to treat people right, give them a great experience, and they'll never forget it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially, you know, and, and I think a lot of podcasters don't think that way when it comes to when it comes to their guests. But I do because I'm on the other end. I'm I'm a guest on podcasts all the time. And so when going into creating my podcast, I'm like, okay, Keisha, what are the things that frustrated you about being on somebody else's podcast? And then I implemented, you know, systems and processes to eliminate that from my guests. You're but, wise. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I try. I do my yes. best. <laughs> and you succeed. You do. I, I'll be honest. Like I, I used to be huge on try. Maybe we'll get into this. That's part of one of the lessons that I've learned mm-hmm. um, over the past year for sure. And probably even a little bit into 2019 as well is starting to eliminate that word try from our vocabulary because we're doers. Mm-hmm. We're doers, man. Try. Mm-hmm. Try is like. I was going to say run on the treadmill, but I don't want to insult nobody. (laughs) You know, like it's a Uh different experience than if a person is, you know, like competing and and getting something done, you know, as opposed to, you know, just like you're staying in place, like you're doing a little bit here, a little bit there. But now I say all that to say you're a doer, like, and the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in how you've been able to execute excellently with your podcast and other business adventures as well. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. I, I accept all those words of wisdom. Thank you for that. And you're absolutely right. You know, try is one of the three words that I talk about in my book that we need to remove from our vocabulary. So obviously, I'm it's still tough working. though, because I find yeah. myself saying it too. Then I'm like, oh, no, not, I'm not going to try to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's, like, it's either you are or you're not. It's like, right. which, which, which one is it? You know, when it's, when it's all about going after your goals, operating purpose, you know, you need to be in or be all the way in or just be all the way out you know but um you guys definitely check out my episode on Jonathan's podcast because I I know this is gonna seem (laughs) you know really far-fetched but Jonathan was able to pull something out of me that I hadn't shared anywhere else anywhere else and I still haven't shared it um Jonathan you know on the podcast and interviews that I've done since being on your show, Jonathan asked me, you know, what was the catalyst that helped me to get to the place where I knew I had to know God. And that question got me so choked up, you know, because he pulled something out of me and I ended up sharing something that I had been holding dear to my heart for so long, but I don't know. It just felt right to share it and to talk about it in that moment. And I did, but I'm not going to tell you guys what I said, because you're going to have to go and check out the episode. No, right. So you're cover. smart. You're smart. Link right in show notes. <laughs> you're smart. I love it. Yes. Yes. The links are in the show notes. So definitely, definitely check it out. So nice little segue. Jonathan, what is real love? Because the name of your podcast is The Right to Real Love. So what is real love and why do we have to have, or why do we have the right to it? Gotcha. So the simplest way for me to explain what real love is, it's a love that connects us to God, ourselves and others in a manner that is mutually beneficial. So some words that you could use to describe it are, it's a healthy love, it's a wholesome love and a selfless love. And the reason why we have a right to it is because it's the way God designed us. He designed us to function innately with real love. And the sad thing about it is there are a lot of people in our world today who they don't have that real love in their life. And even worse, they don't even have that real love within themselves. And that's one of the reasons why you see people often struggling or suffering is because of a lack of real love. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely beautiful. You are so (laughs) right. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So how does that right affect our thoughts and our actions? So I think it boils down to the fact that something that you mentioned with regards to your podcast, Mm self-awareness, right? Mm -hmm. This ties into awareness as well. If a person is not aware of a right that they have, 
then they're going to be dissatisfied and frustrated most of the time. But a person who is aware of their right, they're going to be empowered. And think about it in our daily life. If we know that we have a right, let's say, for example, last year with the pandemic and everything that was going on, mm-hmm. and we understand that there were some checks that went out, right? Some stimulus checks. Mm-hmm. Let's say, for example, a person had to actually go onto a website and fill something out in order to receive that check, as opposed to the government just sending it to us, right? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people wouldn't have got that check. Why? Because they wouldn't have been made aware of the fact that, hey, it's a right that is available to you, but there's a process that you have to go through in order to see that right fulfilled in your life. It's the same thing with real love. It's a lot of people that do not have the awareness that they have a right to it. And as a result, they're living a life that's less than what they desire. You know what? Oh, yes, you are absolutely, you're absolutely right. And it also, you know, exposure comes with that, with that as well, because once I was out in the world, you guys, you, you know, my, you know, my story, you know, my background, you know, that I grew up in the, grew up in the projects. I'm a first generation college, college graduate, but it wasn't until I got out in the world and started exploring myself that I realized that, oh my God, I have a right to be here. I have right. a right to be here just like everybody else, because, you know, there was something that God has planned for me. You know, that Mm self-awareness journey that I went on, that journey of self-discovery, you know, that's where I learned my rights. Because even in your your podcast episode, I, I just talked about, you know, how it was when I heard that God has a purpose for my life that the light bulb kind of went off and it made me curious. It was just like, oh, wow, really? So (laughs) with that plan that he has for my life, I have rights that come with that, you know? So I have the the right to use my voice and advocate for myself. You know, I have the right to share my story, um, you know, authentically and confidently, you know, because people want to shut you up sometimes, you know, do. people don't, don't want you to, to share, but I have the right to do that. And people have the right to hear it. I do. They have the right to hear how God has, you know, saved and helped someone, you know, through a situation. They have the right to hear that so they can know that he'll do it for them as well. Most definitely. I completely agree. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what about kingdom principles? Why are they important to follow when building and maintaining relationships? Yeah, kingdom principles. So before I get to the question, I think Maybe there's somebody out there who don't even know what they are. <laughs> so, so let me start by defining that term because some people may not be familiar with it. So essentially, kingdom principles is a alternative way of saying a biblical principle, a principle that we find within the text of the Bible. So when you're asking me what a kingdom principle is, the reason why we call it a kingdom principle, or I use that term is because I got it from um, the late Dr. Miles Monroe. When he was doing his teachings on the kingdom of the God, one of the things that he would refer to the principles throughout the Bible as as kingdom principles. And that's a term that I've continued to use once I became aware of it. So that's to kind of give people an understanding of what kingdom principles are. And then you were asking why it's important to follow them when building and maintaining relationships. Is mm-hmm. that right? Yep. Honestly, simply because they're rooted in God's word. And one thing that we should all be aware of, especially as people who subscribe to or are believers in God's word and God himself, is that his word will always produce results. So for me, one of the reasons why I built the Right to Real Love radio podcast on the foundation of kingdom principles, along with another pillar, which is self-accountability, is because a kingdom principle should be a pillar because it's always going to be standing. There is no way that a kingdom principle isn't going to produce the results that it's supposed to produce. So as a result, success is inevitable. I love that. I love that. And then also too, when you follow kingdom principles, it it takes the, um, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, it lets you know exactly what it is you have to do, right? Mm -hmm. It it, it takes away you having to figure it out, you know, Uh, because his word never changes. It's it's true. 
it never changes and it never will, you know, leave you astray, lead you astray. So, cause I know I go back to the Bible all the time when just trying to figure out like, what's the best thing to do? Like mm -hmm. what's the best thing to do when it comes to my relationships? Because you guys know that I'm all about building a support team. And in order to build a support team, um, you need to maintain a nurture relationships. But how do you do that? You know, because mm -hmm. my um, goal is to get people to um, reinvent how they think about relationships. Because I think most times we are so focused on removing people from our lives instead of just really focus on nurturing nurturing the relationships that we already have mm -hmm. and making relationships with people um, that can help us in the areas where we lack you know because if we just really think about it um did jesus really like pay too much attention to relationships because he had somebody in his inner circle that betrayed him and he was really <laughs> there you know, but we right. get so focused on as soon as you stab me in the back, I'm just going to, you know, cut you off and let you go instead of focus on the purpose that's right in front of you. Right. What relationships mm -hmm. do you need to build in order to stay in alignment with purpose? So it's it's always good to just got to go back to God's word. Always. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how does God's love impact how, you know, we operate in purpose or does it? at all at least for me i think it is a determinative or it determines what my priorities are and mm -hmm. i think that the same could apply to other people as well and this is what i mean for me it determines whether or not i'm prioritizing god's purpose or my own quote-unquote purpose or pursuit and i'm not sure if i've ever had this conversation with you but in case i have it i do want to be um completely transparent i do have a different kind of perspective when it comes to purpose especially since it's something that has become popularized i would say within maybe like yes. the last five years or so yes so how do you define it then well it's not so much about the definition of purpose mm -hmm. but identifying what purpose a person is in pursuit of so I believe that there is a distinct purpose that God has delivered to each and every last human being and then mm -hmm. there are own pursuits and oftentimes people label their own pursuits as their purpose and even go to the extent of labeling it as God's purpose for them. I'm not saying that there mm -hmm. isn't a possibility that those things can be related, but the one thing that I've come to find is that sometimes people are ignoring, like we just got through talking about, the principles in his word mm -hmm. that allude to and in some instances explicitly reveal what our purpose is in life and then those other pursuits or what I like to call them assignments or missions in some instances those things are all about operating within that framework that he already set up for us and being able to accomplish that utilizing the gifts the tools and the talents that he's given you to do so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know I agree with you that um the word purpose have been, has been popularized, especially in, in social media, especially in, you know, the entrepreneurial space. And I think that, you know, when it comes to entrepreneurs in particular, I think a lot of them make their business their purpose. And, you know, I, I had to do what well, I didn't have to, but I chose to do um, a series on Instagram and Facebook going live, just talking about how to bridge the gap between life and entrepreneurship. And um, one of the things that I talked about is how your business is not your purpose. The <laughs> business itself is not your purpose because I truly feel that whatever the purpose is that God has placed on your life, you know, you can do that in any way, right? It mm -hmm. is not confined to just this business because you know, if, if you're thinking that your your business is your purpose, so why are you in business? Right, like, because, oh the, no, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, so what's the reason for starting the business, you know? Because um, I've done research, I've, I've gone to the Bible to say, to find like purpose, what does this mean, you know? And, you know, I'm still new, I'm still, you know, a, a baby beginner, if you will, I haven't necessarily found the answer. But during my studies, I ran across an author, her name is Marshawn um, Evans Daniels. 
And she defined purpose as the impact that you have on other people. It's the impact that you leave. Like, how are you impacting others? How, how does someone's life change or their experience change when they come in contact with you? I can do that without starting a business. Right. So me operating in purpose, because in my business, my self-awareness coaching business, I'm all about, you know, um, operating purpose in every area of your life. It's not just in your career. It's not just in your in your business. But how am I operating purpose when I talk to my husband? How am I operating in purpose when I'm here on this podcast? How am I operating in purpose when I'm walking down the aisle at a Target? You know, purpose mm-hmm. is not something that we should confine into this into this little box. We need to be operating in purpose in every area of our life. How am I operating in purpose when it comes to my finances? You know? And so I, I think that people, I think I agree with you. I think that the word has been popularized and I think that people have um, a misconception on what it is and they made it, they've made it this thing that they can touch and they can feel that they can manipulate. And I, I don't think it's really it's really that. I definitely appreciate that. And that's good that you took the time to begin to study and Mm -hmm. especially search the scriptures to determine the answer for yourself, because that's essentially what happened to me. I used to have a very narrow perspective of what purpose was. Mm -hmm. And through conversations that I had with people, through studying the Bible, and also through different books that I read, it began to expand my view similar to how you mentioned the author's book that you read you know it providing you a different perspective of purpose Mm -hmm. and being able to use that as a springboard in also using it in in addition to what you're learning in the bible and that's essentially what happened with me you know and what I really have come to the conclusion at least to date is that God's purpose for our life is intrinsically and directly tied to our existence Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why the statement you made, some people may not like it, but if they were to use the definition of purpose that I currently operate by, then you would see that a business is not directly or intrinsically related to your existence. Mm -hmm. You can exist as an individual without a business. So by default, that cannot be your purpose utilizing the definition that I use. You know, people are definitely free to use their own definition, but I just wanted to kind of convey why I take the approach of saying, you know, like certain career aspirations and, you know, entrepreneurial ventures are not a person's purpose is because you could do the, you could exist without those things and still live a life that is pleasing to God and fulfill the assignments and the missions that he gives you along the way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, and and you're right. Some people are not going to, um, are not going to feel comfortable with it. And, and, you know, if you have a business, I, I'm not saying to, <laughs> to shut down your business either. That's, that's, that's not what, yeah. that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, let, but, let me give an example, because what you yeah. just stated with regards to the business mm-hmm. for some people, like I'm, I'm just, is more about semantics than anything, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's just about the terms that we're choosing to use. I'm not saying that a person starting a business is not one of the reasons why they are on this earth and why God does have them on this earth. Mm -hmm. I think we can attest that our lives would be different if certain people didn't launch what are now very popular businesses. Like -hmm. like they've shaped the way that we do life, some in good ways and some in not so good ways. But we can tell that those things clearly had a purpose in the grand scheme of what God desires because if you are a believer that God is all knowing and that he knows everything, we're here, he understands the end before the beginning, you know, when when we are operating with a God like that, we can understand that there are different elements that are a part of each and every last one of our journey. So I just want to give a quick example. So let's say, for example, a person says that they are an author and being an author Mm -hmm. is their purpose. I would say... Yeah, you know, being an author could be a part of the plan that God has for your life. But let me paint a picture of why it's so important to understand purpose from the existence perspective or from God's perspective. The the principle that I found in God's word that revealed to me what his purpose for all of us is, is Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. So that's Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. It says to fear God 
and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Right there. So tying this to my example, if a person is an author, I'm going to use myself, for example, I used to want to be an author years ago. And at that time, it was long before I ever developed an intimate relationship with God. You want to mm -hmm. know what kind of books I wanted to write? I wanted to write Black Urban Lit. Okay. A lot of violence, a lot of sex, all of those things that are, you know, things that are not biblical. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the fact that God didn't give me an assignment or a plan to write a book at some point. But when I finally did, you know, co-author a book, it was a prayer book with my mother for women to pray prayers for their future husband. Mm. So this is the way that I say it's being an author, being an entrepreneur, being a business person, that may be a part of the plan that God has for your life. But if you do not have an understanding or you're not connected to his purpose for your life, operating within a fear of him, operating by keeping his commands and obeying him and having reverence for him, then mm -hmm. you may start a business, but it may be the wrong business. Just like mm -hmm. if I would have wrote that book in the past, yeah, I would have wrote a book and I would have been an author technically, but it would have been the wrong book. It wasn't the book that he intended me to write because I was operating outside of his purpose at that point in time. And I think that that same principle can be applied with any aspiration that a person has. I 100% agree. You know, business and, and authorship to use, to piggyback off of your example, it's, it's the vehicle that you use to operate in purpose. That's what it is, right? So you yes. knowing what your purpose actually is and it being connected to your, you know, to your existence as you, you know, clearly stated earlier, then writing the prayer book, that was just one of the vehicles that you use to make your purpose, to put your purpose in action. So it's the right. vehicle. So yeah, so I, yeah, I 100% agree with that. I'm much 100% agree with that. Because even with me, with, you know, with my business, I don't say that my business is my purpose. I say that it's the vehicle that I use to, to operate in, in my purpose. You know, it's the, mm -hmm. it's the, the confidence that I give women to, or young girls to really speak up and get the help that they need. You know, I, I can do that without outside of my business. I was doing that before, you know, having a business wasn't even a thing in my mind. I was already, I was already doing that, you know, and if God forbid my business doesn't succeed, then I will continue to do that because it's, you know, it's my purpose is not my business. It's just one of the vehicles that I choose to use it. So, yeah. So I love that. So hopefully we've got people thinking, you know, um, because I also don't want people to think that they have to start a business too, because right now it's popular to do that. You know, living in the middle of a pandemic, especially at the top of the pandemic. I don't know about you, y'all, then, but I saw all type of posts on social media saying this is the perfect time to, you know, start a business <laughs> and this is the perfect time to like write your book. And I got on social media to say, maybe this is the perfect time for you to just be still. Right. And, yeah. And hear what it is that God is, is telling you to do. Maybe this is the perfect time for you to get your house in order. I right. don't care what, what it is you want to do. It's going to be hard to do it if your house is not in order. And yeah. when I say house in order, I'm not just talking about finances. I'm talking about the relationships with your spouse. If you're married, the relationship with your children. If you have, if you have children, you know, like is your house in order? So you can be able to build upon, so you can be able to hear what it is that, you know, God is saying to you or has said to you in the past, because people can, can block us, can block his message and distract us from, from the message. So is your house in order, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't want people to feel like pressured into starting a business or if they started a business, so one way, but one way or the other, it's all about moving in a direction that God has told you to, to move in. I agree. Period. Period. You know, speaking of the, speaking of the pandemic, you know, that was such a, you know, traumatic year for a lot of people. It was something that affected all of us. Right. So how mm -hmm. do we tap into God's love after experiencing something you know, like a pandemic, you know, that literally tested, tested us in every possible way. How do we tap back into God's love? Because maybe some people are even doubting whether or not he actually loves them after they experience a traumatic year. Right. 
Now, I think clearly it can be different for every person, right? I think that just mm -hmm. kind of goes, it, it bears stating just so that people are aware that what what tapping into God looks like for one person doesn't necessarily mean that it'll look the same for other people. But kind of going back to what we were talking about before kingdom principles, I prefer to give people, I guess you could say principles, things that I think will be applicable to any person. So the first thing that I think we are should do if we haven't already is to identify the good, the blessings immense, mm. the challenges that we encounter. Mm -hmm. And I am of the belief, others may disagree, but I truly believe that everybody can find blessings and good that came out of the challenges, even amidst some of the loss, the death, and a lot, whether that's loss of job, loss of health, whatever the case may be, I feel like there's always good, there's always blessings in it because everything happens for a purpose. Everything happens for a reason. And after a person identifies that, that good, those blessings, I think they should highlight it. And when they talk about, you know, the pandemic or the things that happened in 2020, they should be focusing in on the highlights. Don't, don't carry that with you into this year and, you know, beyond, like focus on the highlights, be like, yeah, I, I went through some stuff, but let me tell you about this, that, and third, and let it be all good, all blessings. So that was the first thing I'll say. Two other things I recommend. Um, mm -hmm. Second one would be to search for the lessons just like there's always good and there's always blessings, there's always lessons. I promise mm -hmm. you, there's always lessons, even in the things that are tough, the things that are challenging. So it's vitally important for us to search through everything that happened in our life and whether that be directly or indirectly, and then sift those lessons. And after you have them, commit them to your memory and start to apply them, apply them in your life. And then the last thing that I say is you should look for other people who have been through the storm during that time, and those people are still pressing forward. And that can happen on a personal level, or it can even happen from afar, you know, using social media, what have you. And if it's somebody that's close to you, then definitely take the time to ask them and to seek some guidance from them and definitely look, listen closely to what they have to share about what help them to get through that situation. And if it's somebody that you're looking at from afar, you know, one example that comes to my mind is um, Pastor, uh, what's his name? Why is his name slipping my mind right now? Um, Dr. Tony Evans, like near the head of like, I think it was like near the start of everything that was going on with the pandemic, like his mm -hmm. wife passed or somewhere around that mm -hmm. period of time. And, you know, he continued to put out sermons and videos and continue to help and uplift other people. And we know for sure that he was hurting and his family was hurting. There's no doubt about it. So I just utilize that as an example of somebody who we see definitely had to deal with a storm and was continuing to press forward. You should be able to look at those people from afar and listen closely to the things that they're saying. So like, for example, with Dr. Tony Evans, like if you listen to his sermons or something, listen to the things that he say when he has those moments that may be transparent and you can apply that same principle to anybody else and extract those nuggets as, as well. I'm gonna have to check out um, Pastor. I'm gonna have to check him out, Pastor Tony Evans. I'm making I'm making a note of that. Those are some some really good points, um, Jonathan. And I, I and I also just wanted to just expand on a couple of things because you did say you know to find the good in the challenges. You know even even in the depths that um, that that happened last year, find the good in it. And, and you're right. We should find we should find the good in it. But for for those of us who are not able to find the good, please have solace in the fact that God is going to use that pain and turn it into purpose. Please have find solace in that fact because I think sometimes we look for answers, and if we don't get them quick enough, we get discouraged, and our mind tends to go into that into that negative place. Because as you guys know, uh, a couple of years ago, I lost my brother. My brother was um, was murdered. And I question, I question that, like what's the good that can come out of that? And to be completely honest with you, I don't have the answer to that question yet. But I'm, just because I don't have the answer to that question, I'm not allowing it to keep me depressed. 
Um, you know, I'm not stopping my grieving process. I'm not, you know, mad and angry at God for, you know, taking my brother away too early, you know, in, in my opinion, you know, taking my brother away too early. I find comfort in knowing that, you know, God has a plan and has a plan and it's already in play. And obviously for me and, you know, my uh, earthly eyes, I haven't seen it, you know, play out yet. But I have comfort in knowing that, you know, God's will was done in my brother's life and, you know, what's to happen, you know, after, you know, in the future, everything is going to be according to God's plan. So I'm just focusing on what I am supposed to do. Right. Because I don't want to get so distracted and, and so focused on, you know, God, why, 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 why? You're not giving me the answers. Why? That I'm falling off of my purpose and I'm falling out of alignment. Right. Because people are tied to my purpose and I have to continue to stay in alignment so I can be a blessing to other people. So even though I don't have the answer to that question just yet. I'm not allowing it to, to, you know, I'm not allowing it to stop me. So I just want to encourage people to, to do the same thing. And also looking for other people who have gone through it and, and pushing forward. You guys, if you listen to this podcast, I have a whole bunch of episodes. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, because we all about talking about it, you know, here on, on the podcast, because I think that is so important. I stand in agreement with you on that, Jonathan, that we need to find people who have gone through it and still pushing forward and just hearing how are they doing it? Because that's what we want to know. Like, how are you doing it? I get that question all the time. Keisha, how are you able to so confidently talk about the fact that you were, you know, sexually abused? You know, I have to answer that question all the time. And I'm okay with answering that question because people want to know, even if they haven't, you know, been sexually abused, they have gone through some type of traumatic experience and they just want to know how the heck were you able to do how, how the heck are you able to do it? You know, people are looking mm-hmm. for those are looking for those answers, you know, they want answers that they can physically, you know, talk to somebody they can physically touch, you know, and um, that's why I share. And that's why I bring people on the podcast to, to share as well. So I love that you, I love that you said that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Good stuff. Absolutely. So um, let's take a moment to talk to the singles that's out there. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's do it. (laughs) I want to, you know, I want to talk to them for a moment because, you know, the, the pandemic, I can only imagine, um, the hardship it caused for dating, you know, um, I had my husband here, you know, to be, you know, quarantined with, um, so I was blessed in that way, but I know there are a lot of, you know, singles out there who just, who didn't have that significant other and they don't have the, the, the the family foundation, you know, so going through the pandemic alone and being quarantined, you know, alone, I'm pretty sure it was, it made it really, really hard for them. So what would you say to the singles out there who are probably like, you know what, I need to hurry up and get into a relationship. You know, I need to find somebody because I don't want to face something like this ever again alone. What would you say to them? Got you. So I'm going to start off soft because, you know, I I come hard at the singles because, you know, I talk to them regularly. (laughs) So I'm going to be nice. I'm on your platform. I'm going to be nice. (laughs) So the first thing that I would say is, are are they sure they're ready? Mm. You know, are they sure they're ready? Is a relationship truly the solution to the problem that they perceive? Mm. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to do what I typically wouldn't do. But like I said, I'm being nice on your podcast. So I'm actually going to cheat a little bit, but I think they've had enough time to figure out, well, you know, yeah, a relationship is the solution for my problem. But you know what I would say? The fact that it's a problem means the relationship ain't no solution to it because a relationship is never a solution to a problem. If there is a problem, you need to address the problem. Mm -hmm. So if you view the relationship or jumping into one as a solution to a problem that right there will let me at least from my perspective know that 
you have other work to do. And that kind of leads me into the more in your face type of approach that I'm known for. So the one thing that I always ask singles to do is start with yourself. Like I said, that's the second pillar of right to real love, self accountability. And I'm just going to ask the question, have you faced yourself yet? You know, a lot of people want to jump into relationships because of like you mentioned, even with events that they face over the past year. Mm -hmm. But my question is, yeah, you face some challenges, but have you faced yourself? Going back to what you stated, a lot of people, you know, they're quarantined and now they're like, oh, well, let me, continue. you know, grind don't stop. Let me write a book. Let me start an online business. Let me start my own entrepreneurial from home business. Mm -hmm. And like you said, sometimes you need to be still. And I think the same principle applies to singles. Some people need it to not be able to date. Let's just be real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going back to what we talked about in the previous question, how I said there's good in everything. We have no idea how many women may have been at, you know, kind of once again, kind of going back to something that you tapped into. We don't know how many women were saved by being at home in the quarantine from being sexually abused, Ooh. from being kidnapped, from Ooh. being killed. See, we always think about what we losing, but we don't think about mm -hmm. the things that some people may have gained as a result of our quote unquote loss. We don't know what that that time that we had to stay quarantine did some people needed that some people needed to be right where they were or needed other people to be right where they were or needed it to not be able to go on that date or not to meet that person or not to connect at that place at that particular time so I think it's vitally important for us to not just look at things from our limited view because oftentimes people think very subjectively and it's often a challenge, at least in my experience, to get people to think objectively. So that would be my challenge to the singles is you face those events. Have you faced yourself, though? Because oftentimes people use relationships and hopping into relationships or from relationship to relationship as a way of avoiding that problem that I, I mentioned earlier. If you're looking for a solution, that means there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to avoid the problem man then you're never going to be able to resolve it like that's not the way it works that's the reason why you'll continue to have frustration and with that being said I think that as opposed to jumping into a relationship or you know running to anyone or any relationship to seek refuge because that's really what they're seeking they're seeking yeah. refuge like yeah. you stated and the bible is clear God is our refuge mm -hmm. you can find that in Psalms 46 don't even have to go far it's right there in verse one god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble like how has that person been relating to god how has that person been relating to themselves if they didn't take time to do that then i can assure you our relationship isn't going to be the solution for that individual but i do want to encourage my singles out there that are ready and there isn't any problem that you have to solve. What I would say to those individuals is, hey, you made the most of that time that you had. It may have been a challenge, but go back to the things that I mentioned before. Go strip out the good, go search for the lesson, and then look for other people that may not feel the same way that you feel about it right now mm -hmm. and figure out what's different, especially as a believer. You know, why is it that one single person was OK with it, but then you find yourself dealing with it a little bit different? If you have that person in your personal inner circle, ask them, ask them, you know, how, how are you dealing with that? And if they're like, oh, man, you know, it was X, Y, Z and it wasn't X, Y, Z for you. Ask them why. So mm -hmm. you can learn from that individual. So that's what I would say. I love that I love that and I stand in I stand in agreement with you and you probably stepped on some people's toes by telling them to look I at typically do part. when I talk to the singles <laughs> <laughs> like that's just because like y'all promise you wait they should have caught me back in 2014 when I first was starting man I was I was more soft I played with kid gloves but I've been doing this thing too long and I've been yeah. able to talk to too many singles and mm -hmm. be able to identify the issues that are within our society and people just, they're not going to get it. I'm not just going to give you like this, what you want to hear, essentially. I'm not going to give you what you want to hear. I'm going to give you what you need to know. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you, you guys, what Yonathan said about facing yourself, that is, the, that's where you need to start. But the good news is, because there's good news in everything, like Jonathan said, right. the good news is you don't have to face yourself alone. That's the reason why I do self-awareness coaching. So go to LakeishaWare.com forward slash coaching for more information so we can partner together because you know, self-reflection and self-awareness, it can be, you know, it can be a scary thing. And it's so funny that you start with that because I had to face myself in order to really have the relationship that I have with my husband now, you know, to get to the point where we even got engaged. I needed to face, I needed to face myself, you know, because he early in the, in the relationship when we were dating, he told me that he felt as though that, I, he, there was no room in my life for him, you know? And the only reason why when he said that it hit differently is because it wasn't the first time a man that I dated has said that. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is not the first time that I've heard this. So let me take a moment and let me look at self for a moment, you right. know? Because we can't always blame it on the other person. We literally sometimes have to stop and take a look at, ourselves. And you guys know that I'm really transparent. So I'm just going to tell you about my particular experience. And hopefully this was, in, this would encourage you to look at yourself. But what I realized that, you know, even though I said that I was a, a heel woman, I was still, you know, I still had some victim, you know, tendencies, if you will, because this list, y'all know women, <laughs> y'all know lists, this oh, yes. list, this <laughs> list, <laughs> the list that we have of the perfect man, you know, I had that list too. But what I realized is that when I made that list, at the time that I made that list, I was in victim mode. I was a mm. victim when I made that list. And so now I'm dating my, my husband, who was then my boyfriend. I'm saying that at this point moment, I'm the healed woman. So if I'm a healed woman, why am I still holding on to this victim list? Right. There was no need for me to hold on to it anymore. So if if I'm a, a healed woman, I believe that God has healed me. So now it's time for me to act as such. So I had to look at my myself to really come to that realization. So what did I do? I tossed the list, but don't get it twisted. Just because I tossed the list, it didn't mean that my standards was lowered. It just right. means that, you know, I was operating from a place of healing and I trusted in the healing, I trusted the fact that God healed me. I trusted the fact that I've learned tools over the years to help me to, you know, uh, be able to um, nurture a, a healthy relationship or uh, notice a healthy relationship and be able to see the red flags and the warning signs, you know, up front early so I can get out of the relationship, but that's what I needed. That's what I needed to do. But that, that, that list and trying to stick to that list, you know, almost caught me, almost cost me a good thing. So I literally had to look at me, you know, because sometimes it's not, it's not all about the guy. Now I'm not saying there are no knuckleheads out there. That's totally <laughs> not what I'm saying, you know, but that self-reflection, it will definitely get you every time. And it's something that you don't have to face alone because we can we can face that together we can That's face real. that together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can i add one practical sure, piece please. because i always like to leave this and i don't want them to think i i like give them that hard that real and then i don't keep it practical and give them something that they can apply so as you mentioned sometimes people want to jump into relationships what i've come to find out especially within the past year is what we really often are in need of is community Mm -hmm. And sadly, we live in a society where when we feel alone mm -hmm. or we feel like we're by ourselves, for lack of a better mm -hmm. term, um, mm -hmm. and that can be internally or externally, right? Mm -hmm. What we need is not necessarily a relationship, especially if we're feeling alone or feeling by ourselves. Like the relationship, like I said before, that's not a solution to that quote unquote problem. What a person really needs is community. And that is something that we need to do a better job of cultivating. And I'm speaking to myself in this moment as well. And that was definitely something that became apparent to me last year when I began to become a part of more communities, you know, God leading me to um, start certain groups myself, whether that be Bible study or other groups, and just seeing 
how valuable it is to communicate with people, even during a time when nobody could go out of the house. It was just remarkable. And it was definitely a lesson that I took away. Like, man, community is really the key to get into a place where we can operate and wait patiently, especially when it comes to our singles out there. I love that. And, you know, and to, to piggyback off of that, because I'm all about building community as, as well. I just want people to also um, take into consideration that your community or take into consideration removing the idea of what community actually looks like. You know, I did a, a podcast episode talking about, you know, focusing on the people that are actually there on your support team to get what it is that you need, you know, to, you know, get through whatever it is you're going through mentally and emotionally. Because I think sometimes we can get so focused on the fact that, you know, mom is not a part of that community. Dad is not a part of that, that community. Or my community is just like super small, you know. We may have to, you know, let go of what community actually looks like so we can actually build the type of community that we need that we can actually that we can actually lean on you know because at my my hardest times you know um during last year I found myself you know leaning on people that I didn't necessarily have blood relation to and that was okay and it took me a moment to really like realize it but it was just like, hey, I have this community of amazing women who support me. Let me tap into this because this is the time for me to tap in. So let me go ahead and, and tap in. And, then, and that was completely okay. And it was exactly what I needed, you know, to emotionally and to mentally get through that trying time that I was going through in that moment so I could stay in alignment with purpose. So sometimes we need to just, you know, be okay with our communities looking a little different than than what we what we use what we're used to. That's good. I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have I told you you are amazing? <laughs> have you, you heard well, you are man. amazing? This is so fun, man. We've been talking about some deep stuff today. I like that. I like conversations that have more depth to them. Absolutely, because that's that's exactly what that's exactly what we need, especially going into you know, twenty twenty one. We need these deep conversations because 2020 was deep, all right? <laughs> I mean, there was nothing shallow about 2020 <laughs> at all. So we just need some some real deep conversations where people can literally like take notes and have action steps. And you gave a lot of action steps. So you guys, you know, please take a moment to take all this in, but definitely listen again. And the second time around, have your pen and your paper so you can write down and, and take notes because I'm all about action steps. And I love the fact that you gave action steps today. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. No problem. So before I let you go, just please let us know. Give us a book or audible recommendation because I'm addicted to audible. Give us <laughs> a book or audible recommendation that you have read or listened to that has inspired you on any level. So based on what we've been talking about today, there are three books that I would personally recommend. So with everything going on, people trying to overcome the challenges of the past year, there's a book that Dr. Miles Monroe wrote entitled Overcoming Crisis. I -hmm. would highly recommend that for anybody that is still trying to wrestle with how do you come out of everything that you dealt with? I think that that's Mm -hmm. a really great book to address that. Now, for those people who are interested in developing success in their life and their business and other aspects, I would recommend a book entitled Atomic Habits by James Clear. And the reason why is because success is a product of our daily habits. And that's something that I learned from that book. If we want to experience or see success in our lives, we have to make sure that we have the right habits established. And oftentimes where we are off the course is usually with our habits. And that book does a really good job of explaining what habits are and how to make sure we establish good ones. And if we have some bad habits that we need to break, how to go about that process as well. And then the last book, because I don't want to leave out my singles, I would definitely recommend another book by Dr. Miles Monroe entitled Waiting and Dating. I think that that is a book that can definitely help people who are single and answer some of the questions that they may have about what do you do during that waiting period? 
Awesome. You guys, you'll find the um, recommendations in the show notes. Just click on the button that says audible recommendations and I will have them there. You know, thank you for these three books. Nobody has mentioned these three books on a podcast just yet. You know, Atomic Habits, wow. I've seen. Yeah, no, nobody. I'm surprised. Has. I'm surprised. Like, I, I'm not yeah. so surprised about the Dr. Miles Monroe books, but I'm surprised nobody's ever mentioned Atomic Habits, though. Yeah, no, nobody has mentioned it, but I've seen this book around though because it's it's a it's a popular book. I haven't listened. I mean, well, yeah, listen because I'm addicted to Audible. I haven't listened to it yet, but uh, I'm definitely gonna have to put that in my in my playlist because I know yeah. for for me, I'm a very structured person. Mm -hmm. I thrive with with structure and I thrive in structured environments. I so can relate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anytime I am off my game or mm -hmm something crazy has, has happened, you know, it's all I have to do is just go back to my, go back to my routine to like get back on track, you know, or yep. I find myself, you know, off course because I'm off my routine because I have routine, i.e. good habits, you know, that I put in place that helps me yep. to, to stay on track and stay focused. So those are, those are good recommendations. I'm going to have to make sure that I, that I listen to that book. And yeah, so the book is go. I mean, all of those books are. Um, but yeah, depending on where a person is in their life, mm -hmm. uh, I think you can definitely glean a lot when it comes to implementing the right habits in your life through that book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So last question before I let you go. When describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. When you hear these two words, let me know what is your third word. All right. Okay. Self-awareness, purpose, and... Hmm. I would say for me, patience. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, with everything that I've learned, you know, there were some other things that came to mind, but the one lesson that I've learned, especially with what we've been talking about over the past year is just how important it is to be patient. Because I mean, there have been more times in my life than I can imagine that I've wanted to throw in the towel. And having been on the other side of it, I always have that moment when I look back and be like, man, I can't believe like I was ready to be done with it all and look at where God has brought me now. So one of the things that I've extracted from that is just be patient. What it looks like right now, as tough as it may be, even wanting to throw in the towel, you have no idea what God has in store for you if you just continue to press through like we talked about earlier. So mm -hmm. I say patience. I agree. That's good. And that's another first. Nobody has said has said patient yet. And I, have, I don't mean it come easy. I'm just saying yeah, what I yeah. think about self-awareness and purpose. Like I have to have patience. Because what? It takes time to do what you mentioned earlier. Self-reflecting, becoming aware of yourself. Like you got to be still in order to do that. And with purpose, that takes time as well. You got to figure out, especially going back to what I made that distinction earlier. If it's God's purpose, that means you're going to actually have to spend time with him. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like at the very least, you need to be reading his word. And if wow. a person is too busy to do that, then clearly they need to exercise patience in that regard. So that's kind of how I look at it for me. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I appreciate Thank you. you. <laughs> Yo, it was so much fun. I appreciate it. Now, I do recognize and acknowledge for some of you having a relationship is the last thing that's on your mind. And one of the biggest challenges last year were finances because people were laid off and, or furloughed, right? Now, on the flip side of that, people were also promoted. And I even know people that landed six-figure jobs. You probably know someone that was promoted and landed a six-figure job in the middle of a pandemic, right? And you're probably wondering, like, how the heck were they able to do it? Well, I can tell you this for sure. The work that it took to land that six-figure job, it didn't start in 2020, okay? 2020 was just their harvest season. And so next week, we're going to dive into career advancement and navigating corporate politics with someone that I so admire and love. She is so the bomb. You're going to love her too. And I am completely in shock that I'm going to have her on the podcast. You guys, this is like a big deal to have this person on the podcast. I'm not going to tell you who it is because you're going to have to come back next week to find out who it is. But I'm just super, super shocked that she's going to be here on the podcast because you guys just don't know. Like behind the scenes, when I'm pitching people 
to be on the podcast, like sometimes I get nervous, right? Because I want to make sure that I'm delivering great conversations to you every single week. So just know that behind the scenes, your girl is hitting that send button scared, okay? I'm hitting that send button nervously, right? Because a no could come forward and that's okay because, you know, like we already talked about, We're going to eat no for breakfast. We're going to move past the no. But eating no for breakfast and moving past the no is not going to stop the nerves from happening. It's not going to stop the butterflies in my stomach. It's definitely not going to stop my finger from shaking (laughs) when I hit that send button. But just know I am in the background working to get some amazing people here on the podcast. And I'm super excited for you to find out who we're going to have a conversation with next week. Family, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast every single week. If you need help with doing the necessary work for self-reflection, then head on over to strategizeyourvision.com for more information. Also note that all Audible recommendations given on any episode are linked in the show notes. And you can try Audible for free. Please remember to leave a five-star rating, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, And click the join community button that's in the show notes so we can stay connected. Family, as you know, I set a lot to go to touch 1 million hearts within the first two years. And I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share the conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Well, family, I appreciate you. My heart is filled with so much gratitude. And until next time, always remember that you are enough and your truth is beautiful.